Alrighty, everybody. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. It's like we're down to like 31 days until we start counting the official 50 days. Oh, that Kirk Cameron's an idiot. <laughs> Guys, he's a Calvinist retard along with that Ray Comfort idiot. They are going to hell. Both guys are going to hell. Okay? Kirk Cameron, go USA, go USA. The guy's a fool. The guy has no clue who God is and what God's up to. Just eight hours ago, the uh, national news for the Philippines had an article up on YouTube saying that New York City is the wealthiest city on earth. Quite timely, isn't it? You know, the head of Babylon, just in time to be destroyed. A lot of people's wealth will be ruined on that day. A lot of people will feel the brunt of it on that day. And God's going to take them out. This will be an, an act of God via the enemies of the United States. Because the United States is the enemy of God. And it will affect Canada as well. Cush says, yes, they both are sending many of them to hell, as you remembered, along with the, for the Left Behind movies. Okay. Uh, and we're talking, that's still talking about uh, whoever I just said. I can't even think of his name now, man. What did I just say, guys? Good night. It's been that kind of a day. It's been a heavy Kim Trail hell day. They went in panic mode first thing this morning here. And they sprayed all day long because we're about to have us a storm tomorrow. Kirk Cameron is the guy I said. They're going to hell, guys. The only way you're going to go to heaven and anybody's going to go to heaven is to humble yourself and believe. Uh, the word repent means turn yourself away from everything that you think and thought and you go for and you, you, you like the idea of it and you go with God on this. And you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron. Thanks, guys. They're hellbound. And they preach Jesus. And they get the Bible. And they, they thump the Bible. And they're putting people under the law. And the Bible says Jesus hates that. When you put people under the law saying, you got to do this. And you got to do that. And you got to do this over here. And then some of this right there. And there's got to be proof that you're saved. That's not true. You receive a free gift from God the Father, and that is his son, Jesus Christ. Do you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection and its importance for you? It's only way to save you, that Jesus took your place. The great transfer, the great switch. That was your cross. You deserve the time because of your crime. Jesus never did a crime and took your time for you your punishment, and his blood paid redemption's price to redeem you from hell, redeem you from yourself, redeem you from sin, and so you could be purchased and go to heaven. Do you believe that? Do you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of God on your behalf? God became flesh. Jesus wasn't uh, just, you know, a, a son of God and a chosen Christ. He, he's the very God, the creator. Do you believe that Jesus is God? Do you believe he's the creator? Do you believe that wonderful creator came here to die for the creation? Sinful man. And he who knew no sin personally took all of our sin upon him and became sin. So God could punish him. The father could punish him on the cross for our sakes, for our sin. For our shame. Do you believe that? That he did that for you? You must believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. God himself on your behalf. And if you'll believe that, Jesus said, anybody that comes to me, I will in no wise cast you out. I'll never get rid of you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never leave you. If you'll believe. And that's the key. God honors faith above everything. He loves it when you didn't see what happened, but you were told what happened in the word and you believe that the Bible is God. It's his word. It's everything about 
his truth, his heart, and he's delivered his heart to us in 66 books we refer to as the Bible. 39 books in the Old Testament, Genesis to Malachi, and 27 in the New, Matthew to Revelation. Do you believe? Do you believe? And then we just discovered back in the 70s. Now, the Jewish rabbis have known it for a long time. They used to hand count. They would hand count, you know, up to 100, and that was so hard. Now we have a computer to do the counting, and we have more than discovered that God has written the Bible within the Bible. He's encoded the Bible inside the Bible as a second witness. So when idiots come along and they say, Oh, I, I believe portions of it. I believe some of the books don't belong, but I believe some of them do. So, so you're the final authority on which ones belong and which ones don't. Is that what you're telling me? Your authority blows and you're going to hell, man. You need to believe because God honors faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. When Jesus was praying in John chapter 17, he prayed for those who didn't see prayed for those down the line years later who weren't there who would still believe. That's what tickles God is your faith. And I pray you're a person of faith, and I pray that you'll believe and place your entire eternity, your present existence and your entire eternity, base it all on Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, and throw yourself into that, baptize yourself into that truth. And the Bible says you'll be saved. Whosoever believeth in him, shall not perish in hell because that you're, that's your default. You're going to hell, bro. You're going to hell. Everybody's going to hell. And Jesus Christ came so you wouldn't have to. He, he, he didn't, he ain't the one who authorized you're going to hell. You will go to hell. He's the one that saw you fall. He saw Adam fall and he condemned, he damned his entire genealogy. So God had a plan even before he created Adam because he knew it was going to happen. God ain't stupid. God knows all things. The Bible tells us that he knows the end from the beginning. And that's why you got to read the Bible because you got to trust him. Even though it doesn't look like it's going to turn left when he said it's going to turn left or turn right or go straight, you just believe him, walk with him, believe every step. It's going to happen exactly as he has stated. That's why we encourage you to read 10 to 20 chapters every day so you'll know what he stated I talk to Christians all the time, man, who have never read the Bible. I'm like, what is your problem? Did you just hear yourself? Oh, I believe the Bible. I believe God. And you don't want to know his heart. The Bible tells us out of the abundance of your heart, the fullness of your heart, will your mouth speak. The Bible is God's mouth speaking word for word. We're told that over and over. Every word of God is pure. And you don't care about his heart. The proof is, do you read his Bible? If you don't read his Bible, you don't care about his heart. Don't try to convince me you do. You're lying against God. God already said that about you. But he didn't come here to damn you. He came here because you were already damned. Everybody knows John 3, 16, but John 3, 17 says he didn't come to damn you. He didn't come into this world to condemn you. He came because you were already condemned. He came to save you. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. Aren't you thankful for that? Do you believe that? If you'll believe that, you'll be saved. And you shall never perish in hell, but you shall have everlasting life. Your default will have been changed for eternity. Have you taken care of your default? Your default is hell. Jesus Christ, believing in his finished work on your behalf, will change that. And you'll no longer have to perish in hell, but you can have for sure, guaranteed from the mouth of God, the heart of God, everlasting life. He did all of this so you would have everlasting life. He doesn't want to take it away from you. And he promised that he would never do that. When you believe, the Holy Spirit comes inside and he seals himself in. And you are sealed until the day that he chooses to redeem you. Which we believe, he's told us, is a spring, summer, Pentecost rapture. We begin counting the 50 days of that in 31 days from now. We begin counting on May 21. That is this year when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That'll be the 17th day 
of the first month on God's real calendar. It's important to be on God's calendar, understanding his time frames. Okay, we encourage you to do that. And so we have found his time frames. We have discovered them through Stellarium, the stars in the heavens. Guys, on May 18th, the moon will be in the exact place that it was on April 15th, AD 30. That's how we know the calendar. That's how we know it's Nissan. Okay? The moon and the sun will be right there in the exact spot. And everybody's jumping on this. Oh, how about this? And how about that? And this other? And maybe he'll come today. And is it first Passover or second Passover? He's going to rapture us. He already told you. You're denying him. You are not in belief, and that doesn't honor him. He honors faith and belief in his word. His word, the Bible code, says over and over. Hey, guys, the Bible code is the seven thunders of God mentioned in Revelation. The Bible code is that little book that Ezekiel ate, that John ate. The Bible code is that. And you people who always want to go with a different date for the rapture. The different calendar. Oh, look here. Let's use this calendar. No, let's use this one. Let's, how about if you go with God on his calendar? He's given us his calendar in the Bible code in Stellarium. Amen. Nissan 1 this year is May 5th. That's Rosh Hashanah. That's the Happy New Year. That's when God told Moses to start the new year, start counting from that day. The 18th will be the true Passover of God. The 21st will be the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Will you get on God's schedule and quit fly by night in every wind of doctrine with all these people? There's a lady online uh, on Facebook looking up. She shared her watch list. Three quarters of her watch list is heretics. Steve Fletcher and his kind. If you're watching Steve Fletcher, you have zero discernment. The guy's lost as hell going to hell. He preaches a false gospel. He's a heretic. He's a hypocrite. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Every other day is a rapture date for that guy. Why don't you go with God and not those guys? God says he's going to rapture his church in the spring, summer, Pentecost. Pentecost lasts for 153 days. The first 50-day count will end on July 9th. July 9th is the finishing of the first 50 days. Boom. For the wheat harvest. That's Pentecost. Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he went to heaven, he came back, and he walked on this earth for 40 days. He ascended to heaven. Everything he did in his glorified body on earth happened during Shavuot, Pentecost counting. The counting of the Omer. Very exciting. Very uh, noteworthy. Okay? Heather says, praise God he gave us his calendar because he wants us to study to show ourselves approved. He wants us to know his heart. Amen. Bonnie says, hey, Brother Johnny. Hey, Bonnie. I love you guys, man. And we want you all on the calendar with the Lord. You Guys, the Bible code is either his word or it ain't. Now, you better come to grips with that. And if you say it ain't, you are scoffing God's word. Because it is. He says over and over and over that it's his word. It's his fire. It's his heart. It's his thunder. And we know that it's the... Seven thunders. Right now we have six of them, and Sean will complete the seventh one because he is Moses. He's one of the two candlesticks in the tribulation. Or are you going to go with Steve Fletcher on this? I'm going to encourage you to go with Sean on this and not Steve Fletcher. Do you guys know that the name Sean is John in Gaelic? You got no problem with John writing a revelation. How about Sean writing a revelation? Same name. It's his word. Amen. It is his word. God bless you, Catherine. Good to see you here tonight. You better embrace it.
You better come to grips with it. You better quit floating and freaking out and following all those heretics. Okay? That chick uh, looking up. Her playlist is satanic, guys. Looking for the rapture, watching all these idiots who are not grounded in anything, especially the Word of God. Oh, oh rapture's here, rapture's there, and thousands and thousands of hits. Now, there's going to be a rapture, and it's a wonderful evacuation planned by the Lord Jesus Christ himself for his bride. But he's going to do it on the appointed date, not what you fly-by-nighters want it to be. What's his appointed date? Shavuot. Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, the spring, summer, rapture, pre-trib, spring, summer, rapture of Pentecost. Amen? Hey, let's look at Bible code. I love you. We're going to look at a Bible code from September 1st, 2017. Now, this is the very month. Uh, on September 1st, we had already had the eclipse happen. That happened on August 21st. August 21st, 2017. That's when that happened, okay? Then on September 1st, we are looking forward. We were ready. This is 2017. We were ready to see the um, the woman in the stars, okay? The, the Revelation 12 sign. In Revelation chapter 12, John said, man, y'all need to be looking at this awesome wonder. And we are looking and looking, and we found on a, uh, like a star's, software called Stellarium. It shows where every position of every star was from, from all time. Okay, you can go back 6,000 years to creation and see where the sun, moon, and stars. You can look at anywhere on Earth from Saturn, anywhere on Earth from Pluto, in, in any of the places you can look at from that vantage. And we always look from Jerusalem because God is Jerusalem-centric because that is his only town on Earth. Okay, he gave the entire world to man. He gave a, a little land chunk to a group called Israel. And he said, and I will have my own city in Israel and only the Israelites will be the custodians of my land. That's Jerusalem. Uh, yeah, well, that's not happening right now. And that's why God's going to bring thunder. He's going to judge the Gentiles who think they're going to usurp and steal his land and his people's land. And he's going to spank his people because they don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. That They have believed a lie. They believe Kabbalah, the Jews. They are of the synagogue of Satan. They have been swayed because they are partially blinded. And God was the one who partially blinded them because God gave them 40 years to believe. And they still refuse. When Jesus died, was buried, rose again in A.D. 30. Yesterday was the resurrection day. Okay? The 18th of April was the resurrection day in A.D. 30. And God gave them 40 years to get it right till A.D. 70. And they wouldn't believe. They wouldn't believe. So God scattered them. God brought in Titus of Rome and burned Jerusalem, the temple, to the ground. It was savagery, man. The people barricaded themselves in and were eating their own babies. When you read the story about that, it was terrible because they wouldn't choose Jesus. God gave them year after year after year, and he's done that to America, guys, and America has refused him. Do you guys know that in 1939 and 1940, the World Fair was in New York City, Queen. It was the second most expensive World's Fair ever. And their handkerchief in 1939 shows two towers and two planes ready to hit them. Because it was planned all along by the Freemasons. The Freemasons, their motto, one of many, but one of their major mottos, is out of the ashes, the phoenix will rise. And the United States of America was built by Freemasons, George Washington, and that fair happened on the 150th anniversary of George Washington, uh, inauguration anniversary. So when he was inaugurated as a president, the 1939 World Fair was based on his 150th anniversary. And he was a Freemason. You can see many a picture with him in his Freemason apron. And they believe that is their robe of righteousness. And that's why Freemasons are buried in their lamb cloth, sheep 
sheep cloth apron, okay? And it is satanic to the gills because the only righteousness that God honors is his own. He hates self-righteousness. He hates you thinking that you can be good enough to get to his heaven. You're a sinner. You're a filthy person. You're the one that has gotten you into all the trouble you've found yourself in. You need help outside of yourself. And God said, I'll be the one to help you. And that's why Jesus died on the cross. And if we'll believe in that, he infuses, the Bible teaches, it's a word, um, it's accounted to our account. He infuses us with his righteousness. And that's what the qualifier is. And you are infused with that righteousness when you believe. When you believe him, you believe his word, you believe his death, burial, and resurrection, that you are in desperate need of the transfer, of the swap. Jesus swapped places with us. He became our sin so we could become his righteousness. And that's what gets people to heaven. Amen. And he's taking care of the whole sin issue. And I pray that you're believing, man. Amen. Believe, pray, praying that you know this, you understand this. All right. Uh, so anyway, that, that, that whole World Fair thing, we, we got a, we found a uh, handkerchief. That, that handkerchief is from that fair is the one that shows the two towers and the two planes ready to hit them. It was a sacrifice, guys. And it was man-made, and the United States government was all in on it. Amen. Vinyl says, glory to God, ready for that robe. Me too, man. We're going to put on that robe of glorified flesh. We're all going to be, all of us believers who are going to be raptured, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. Whether you were a dead Christian or whether you are a living Christian, we're going to be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. All right. We're going to look at a Bible code from September 1st, 2017. It's pretty cool, man. Pretty incredible. It's huge. It's huge. It says this. This is just the line going this way. The opening term. The axis term. The, the key term that unlocked the whole table. Listen how long this thing is, man. I encourage you, uh, if you can, we're going to... Uh, well, well, we'll get it up. Vonda will be able to put it up later. It says, here's what it says. The wrath to the living is swift. Boom. Now, this is talking about Noah's flood, okay? But it's also an overlay of what's about to happen. Noah's flood was, was with water. This next judgment that's about to come, probably in about three months it'll start, or four. So something like that. The night we're raptured, the most wealthiest city on earth will be destroyed in less than one hour. We'll, they'll go to sleep at night. It'll happen during the night, and they'll wake up, and there will be no New York City. The Russians, God's going to use the Russians and the Chinese to take us out, the North Koreans and the Persians as well, which is Iran. You'll find all that. Your, your homework is to read Jeremiah chapter 50 and 51. That is the devastation, the demolition, the destruction of the United States of America, mainly New York City, the wealthiest city on earth. And God's going to allow him probably to take out L.A., Seattle, Miami, the eastern coast. It won't take too many tsunami bombs. You, you study those. They're called the Poseidon. Everybody's worried about, you know, uh, global warming and all this. Nuke. God's going to start this party with a nuke, a bunch of nukes, and probably an EMP to just to totally crush middle America. America will be done in less than an hour. And they'll wake up in the morning, and it's going to be very confusing because it's all going to happen at night. They're going to wake up in the morning, and many cities will be missing. Much land, the coastal land, will be gone because of the tsunami bombs, the Poseidon bomb. It's a drone it's a nuclear drone, and they're sitting out in the waters right now. They're stealth. They were released probably years ago when Obama was president, and they've been sitting out there, and they'll probably add one or two every now and then, slowly, and they're just sitting on the floor just like a, just like a, a stingray, just sits in there, just like a flounder. He sits on the bottom and gets the sand all around them, and they can just sit there and go nowhere, and they have a 40-year life because they're nuclear. Study that weapon. And we have in our Bible codes that God's going to use the Poseidon to destroy the United States of America. And we also saw that 
picture on the New Yorker magazine, and it showed two waves coming over New York City. They know it's coming, and they work everything in ritual. They knew it was coming in 1939, when planes weren't that old. You remember in World War II when that plane hit the Empire State Building and nothing happened? It just hurt the plane? Then they built the buildings in 1968 and they knew that those planes couldn't hurt the buildings at all. So they sent a demo team in there for the two weeks beforehand. The Israeli Mossad. They were going in there every night. Heather says, Ezekiel 26.3 talks about the water destruction of New York as well. Excellent, Heather. Sure does. You'll, you'll find it throughout the Bible prophets. And I've got friends who belong to the Church of Christ who will never read the Old Testament because their pastors lied to them and told them, oh, that's outdated. It, it, the Old Testament's done. What's done, guys, listen to me. What is done in the Old Testament is temple practice, slaughtering animals, because we have a final sacrifice. We no longer need the animals. We have Jesus and faith. God now no longer requires a physical blood anymore. That's why Satanists do that. That's why Satanists have blood sacrifice, because God hates it. He's renounced it and said, don't do it. So they go ahead and do it. Why do Christians want to do it? Go, go back to living under the law. And that's the part of the Bible that is no longer active right now, okay? But the rest of the Old Testament's active. It hadn't even been completed. Those 17 books of the prophets, man, look at this. Heather just puts up Ezekiel 26. Now, what's cool about that verse is Ezekiel is the 26th book. 26th is God, Jehovah, yod heh vav and gospel. So you got God's gospel, verse 3, talks about the destruction of New York City. And you need to believe that, okay? It, like we started this out, the uh, news source in the Philippines, my wife's from the Philippines, and eight hours ago, they had an article up on YouTube saying that New York City is the wealthiest nation in the world. That has to be a point in time. That has to be stated because it's about to become nothing overnight in less than an hour. All right. So we're looking at this code from September 1st, 2017, and it's about Noah and the destruction with water. Okay. It says the wrath to the living. This is, this is one line all the way up and it goes forever, guys. The skip is 13,675. 13,675. 13,675. And man, I don't even know how many skips this thing is. It is huge. I didn't get a count of them. I just wanted to look this over and see and cover this Bible code. The wrath to the living is swift. So that flood killed them pretty quickly, okay? And it drowned them. And it was the highest mountain. The, God took the water 15 cubits above the highest mountain. So then boys didn't have to tread water long. They couldn't have treaded water. They, they, they could have climbed up mountains and lived a little longer so they can get their air. Boom, boom. Hey, it looks like Vondo uh, put up the link here. The wrath to the living is swift. The reason it comes is not to end the earth. God didn't destroy the er world to end mankind. He sent it to end Nephilim and the seed of Satan. Because that seed had spread all the way through the world. And there was only eight people left who were pure in their generations and walking with God. So God said, I want you to build a boat, Noah. And for 120 years, he built that boat. Amen? With his three sons. And those who boarded the boat was eight of them. The four men and their wives. The reason it comes was not to end the earth. However... The perverse ones defiled the life. The fallen angels had sex. This is Genesis chapter 6, plain text. They had sex. They raped the women of earth. And many of the women were voluntary. They loved it. And they were judged as well. Okay? And so they had an offspring that was never supposed to live that became giants. And when you read the book of Joshua, when Joshua was entering into the land with the 
children of Israel from Egypt. There was 36 families of giants in the land that needed to be ridded. The whole time that they had gone down, the Israelites had gone down, they started with 70 of them, 70 souls. They went down and met up with Joseph and what the brothers had meant for evil, God meant for good. And they stayed there and they multiplied. And then a Pharaoh comes along who was a mean taskmaster. And they were slaves and they were miserable and they called out to the Lord and he heard them. Okay. Now that whole time they were in Egypt, they had a good beginning and a rough ending. Satan was over in God's promised land that he promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and was filling it with his demon seed. Okay. Even after the flood. But what we're talking about is before the flood. And that's why God brought the flood, not to kill human beings to kill Nephilim and the evil that they spread throughout the entire world. Heather says, I'm a bit confused. Noah and his family, wouldn't all generations following be Jewish? He wasn't a Jew. Noah was before the Jews. Noah was before Abraham. Abraham was the first Jew. Years later, okay, after they spread. Noah's great-grandson was Nimrod. Noah's father was a priest in the temple of Nimrod. So that's your time frame there. Uh, I, I don't mean, I'm, I mean Abraham. Abraham's father was a priest in the temple. Okay. And then God got a hold of him, a pagan. Abraham was so pagan. He was under the influence of Nimrod, but he didn't like the idea. And when God spoke to him, he became the friend of God. Amen. And so it was after the flood. And so God chose him to be the first Jew and not his son Ishmael, but his son Isaac and not his son Esau, but his son Jacob. The promise of Israel is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Does that help? Amen. It's a good question. But what that does prove is that all of us listening right now and those who will listen later and for everybody, every human being who's pure human on planet Earth, we have 10 of the same dads. So this whole race thing is the biggest crock, the biggest lie, the biggest joke. It is a put on by the devil. Okay? We have 10 of the same fathers from Adam to Noah. Then Noah had three sons from which we all came. Okay, you got your, what in the old days was called Negroids, Caucasoids, and Mongoloids. That was the three groups, okay? The Africanus, uh, the white European, and the Asians came all three from those three sons, okay? And we're one of those. So we have 10 of the same fathers, and then one of the three of the sons is where we came from. Hallelujah. All right, this is a long code. Who said that? I can't remember who just said that. I said, man, this is a long code, man. Here, here's what the, the code itself says. If you open it up, what Vondo has just put up there in the link, the wrath to the living is swift. The reason it comes is not to end the earth. However, the perverse ones, that's the fallen angels, they defiled the life of Jehovah, the life that God gave. Remember, he made man, Adam, in his image and then breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Okay, and so the devil jumped in there. The devil's always doing that. And God told the devil he would be doing that in Genesis chapter 3. The first time the gospel was ever shared, the gospel plan of salvation, how man would be saved and redeemed, God shared it with Satan. I'm going to make enemies between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, and her seed is going to crush your head and he'll just get a bruise on his heel out of the deal. The gospel. Amen. Amen. Behold, they are from an ark of wood. It is a song of those ones awaiting me in the coastlands of Noah. They were awaiting me in the coastlands of Noah. Okay. Let's look at some of these terms here. It says Genesis 9, 12. And God said, let me blow this up a hair. And God said, this is the token of the covenant, which I make between you and me and every living creature that is with you for a perpetual generation. God wants everybody saved. We wonder, why a flood, God? To drown all the Nephilim. God put an end to all the 
embodied Nephilim. Now, when they died, their spirits had to go somewhere because the Nephilim had nowhere to go. Heaven wasn't for them. Hell wasn't for them. They have their special place. We know it called Tartarus, okay? A special place for these offspring and for the wicked, wicked, wicked angels. The watchers, the 200 watchers who fell on Mount Hermon on the 33rd degree, and they made a pact to have sex with the women of earth, and they formed these bastardized offsprings who later became giants. Now, in our day, the same Nephilim are all around us, except they're not giants. They're among us, the Kardashians and those type, okay? They are Nephilim breeds. They are not 100% human, though they may look 100% human, okay? This is crazy, man. And they're back, and God's going to release them because everybody loves them. You love your evil. You love your wickedness. You hate the truth. They're everywhere, Heather says. They are everywhere, and they are. They're your, they're your news people. They're your sports people. That's why sports are wicked, guys. That's why the movies are wicked. It's the devil's script and the devil's people doing these things, okay? You're going to find out that all these people you idolized were demons. They were idols, and you were really worshiping idols, and that infuriates our God. He's going to bring fire this time because of it. We're going to encourage you to quit having idol worship, quit honoring man Trump, you know, Trump. Quit honoring that guy. Get away from him, and you look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith, and you stay true to him and him alone. And we walk together as those who've been redeemed by him. Okay, He's not willing that any should perish. He wasn't in the flood. But he killed everybody except eight souls because their bloodline, their genome was tainted with demon seed. Okay? And that's what he did. Uh, let's see here. Like this is, what about the reptilian? Are those demons? Yes, yes, yes. They're all that. See, and that's part of the lie too. Part of the lie is, remember, Satan is a snake and a dragon. That's reptilian. Okay? They're all reptilian in nature. And Barack Obama said that on the view, he said, uh, I, I, something like this, if you can find the clip, it says, we all have to start using our reptilian minds, our reptilian brains. What? Yeah, he said that. And see, that is a psychology, a psych psychiatry term. And why would they coin that term? All right. Why would he use a flood? What is Yeshua? The boat. The boat was a picture of Yeshua. Salvation. Salvation from destruction. Salvation from hell. Most everybody that died in that flood went straight to hell. And God waited for Methuselah to die. Methuselah was the oldest man that ever lived. And his name meant his death shall bring destruction. It was understood. His name was his death shall bring and his son's name was Destruction. And so God waited for him to die. They mourned his death for seven days on, on the boat. And God closed the door and started the rain. Which was Noah's ark in this way, which is Yeshua. The sal Yeshua means the salvation of Yah. That boat was the salvation of Yah. And boy, praise God. Upon the earth you shall surely destroy all the places, Lord. And he did. He destroyed everything. The innocent, blameless ones, a nest of Jehovah is rest, is Noah. Noah's name means rest. Amen? His death shall bring the despairing rest, the sorrowing rest. He was innocent and blameless. It could corrupts the beast. Let's look at this left side over here. It says, it, he noticed a wicked producing saturating defect. That means in the human genome, this demon seed was growing and God noticed it and it was becoming just rampant throughout the entire earth and everybody was choosing. That's what the mark of the beast is going to do, guys. It's going to do the same thing that happened before the flood. It's going to turn people into monsters, into beasts. The mark of the beast is a genetic marker of the devil, and it's going to turn everybody into beast, the devil's seed, just like before the flood. 
that's why all these movies do this. They always try to steal God's story and they turn it into science fiction. When the truth is it's biblical truth. It's not science fiction, it's biblical truth. And in their science fiction, they always make man the hero. And in the Bible, man's the zero. It's the son of man, Jesus himself, who's the hero. And when these movies, your favorite little movies, when they don't make Jesus the hero and they don't glorify creation, a six-day creation, they always emphasize evolution and millions of years in these stupid movies. They take all the glory away from God and Christians sit there and just adore it and love it. God hates it. He destroyed the entire world because of it. And he's about to do it again. I'm going to encourage you Christians to repent and turn yourselves. Those of you who believe, those of you who are already saved, Determine you're going to live your entire life for the next three months. July 9th is less than three months away. April 19th, May, June, July 19th. That may be a good day. If the Lord raptures us on the 9th, a good day for Sean to come back. Ten days, let everything cool out, blah, blah, blah. And the Lord talks about ten days several times in the scriptures. That's why I use that term. It'll give plenty of time for things to cool out, and God will send him back with the other guy. Boom. Heather says, praise God. He always warns us in advance. Hallelujah. Jehovah is so good to us. George says, John MacArthur said, you can take the mark of the beast and still be saved in his video. He sure did, George, and he defended it when he was rebuked. The Bible says in the plain text, in the plain text in Revelation, you can't. And the angel is warning the entire world, don't you dare take this mark. And everybody who takes it, it won't be some surprise. They're going to pay allegiance to Barack Obama and Satan. They're going to say, I am a Satanist. At that time, it's only going to be Jesus and Satan. And if you're on the Jesus side, they're going to start beheading you in massive numbers. Fondo says about John MacArthur, he is the biggest idiot ever. He is, because he's going to have a miserable, miserable hell, holding the Bible in his hand week after week after week after week after week and teaching heresy, lies. You better know the truth, because the truth will set you free. He doesn't know the truth. He preaches lies. John Calvin and Geneva Jesus is his God wickedness. How about if you go with Jesus Christ and the Father? Jesus of Nazareth, not Jesus of Geneva, not Jesus of Salt Lake City, not Jesus of upstate New York, and all the other cults that came out of the United States of America. False Jesus is wrong Jesus, wrong gospel, wrong lie. Embrace the truth. The 66 books Read them in rapid succession, 10 to 20 chapters a day, and know that Bible code. Heather says the grooming towards accepting the reptilian DNA is all over. It's all over the place. It's in the movies. It's everywhere, isn't it? And the movies is everybody's pulpit, even the Christians. The Christians spend more time in Satan's pulpit than they do their own at the church. And when they go to their pulpit at the church, most of the time that guy is clueless retard who doesn't know his Bible, doesn't know what we're talking about. And this is a Bible code. You see how long it is for 13,000 plus on every skip, perfect exact skip. And it says this long sentences. Let's read it again. The wrath to the living is swift. The wrath to the living is swift. The reason it comes is not to end the earth. However, the perverse ones defiled the life of Jehovah. Behold, they are from an ark of wood. It is a song of those ones awaiting me in the coastlands of Noah. Praise God. He noticed a wicked producing saturating defect. They were becoming demons. They were becoming beasts. God had to kill them. A mountain we will descend. The watchers came in fear. That is the watchers who fell on Mount Hermon over there in Israel. This Israel-Syria border. It's in Syria. Okay. And they came down there, the watchers. They were the ones who were created. God created them to look exactly like human males with the human male apparatus working in everything. And everybody has a test in the world. And their test was, don't you ever use that with the earthly women. That's for you to blend in with them. And they'll think you're another man, another fella along the way. And so God had the watchers taking care of us to look after us. And these rebelled against God, and it's mentioned right here in this Bible code, man. 
And this is an Old Testament Bible code using Genesis 6, 1 and 2 in the verses, in the plain text. Genesis 6, 1 and 2. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God, that's the fallen angels. Guys, everybody who's a son of God is a first generation creation of God. He created them immediately at creation. They, they weren't reproduced. They weren't a second. So Cain and Abel were not the sons of God, but Adam was. Seth was the lineage from which we all came, and Jesus Christ came through Seth. We all, all humans came through Seth. Okay, that one line of ten fathers, everybody else had been wiped out in the family tree. Okay, and God puts this amazing Bible code here with these amazing skips and however many, it's so many. And then he puts it right in the plain text of Genesis 6 where the demons came down or the fallen angels came down and they had sex with the daughters of men, the sons of God. We said the son of God is one who was on the first line creation. God created them with his hands, with his voice. Okay? And that's what a son of God was. And they, these were angels, first tier angels, and they fell and they rebelled against God. When God said, do not do that, they did it anyway. They had sex with the women of earth and they had a bastardized offspring. Uh, they saw that the women were fair and they took them as wives of anybody they chose. They raped them. You're mine, you're mine, you're mine. And Vondo says, we are now called the sons of God because of Jesus and his shed blood. Hallelujah. We, the bride of Christ, replace these fallen angels. That's why Satan is so angry. He hates us. We took his job. We took his everlasting position that he fell from, that he rebelled from. And all his boys, his one-third, that's why there's a specific number of the Gentiles that need to come in. And the fullness of the Gentiles come in. Okay, we replaced every angel. And that's about to come up here in about three months, guys. Okay? We start counting 50 days on May 21st, and that 50th day will be July 9. You know, right after America, the New York City, the richest city on earth, the wealthiest city on earth, just celebrates, oh, it's America. And they're offering incense to that queen of heaven out there in uh, New York Harbor. Statue of Liberty, Columbia. She's the queen of heaven, guys. God hates her with a passion, always has. It's a Freemason secret, but it's not to us. It's, it's out there wide in the open. God hates that whore. She's the whore of Babylon. And so since we're the head of Babylon, he's going to decapitate us and then take out the rest of them. All right. And Leviticus 11.43 is in here. Ye shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creepeth. Do not mix your seed with animals, with demons, with nothing. Only human on human. Guys, the human sexual act is the most beautiful and intimate. It, it, the way God designed it, it leaves everything untouched. Okay? The way God designed it, it goes right from the male's body into the female's body without ever being outside the body to be touched by anything else. It's a pure, awesome thing. Protection. And people want to destroy that and wreck it. And the devil wanted to get in there and destroy God's wonderful creation. And that's why fornication is so evil to God. Oh, we, we slipped up. You didn't slip up. You committed fornication against God. He has special, special, special privileges for people who are in covenant with him. Everybody who's having sex outside of covenant with him, you're a fornicator. Hello? But we're married. Uh, you got a marriage certificate from the state you belong to, which belongs to Satan. Covenant in marriage is between God, you, and your spouse. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. That's a true marriage. And even if you have an unsafe spouse, you and God make that marriage clean. You and God make that marriage holy. Isn't that awesome how God does that? Hallelujah. Because he anticipated, he knew that some spouses wouldn't be saved, but the other would. And he doesn't judge us and condemn us and call us fornicators in that situation. 
Hallelujah. Uh, the innocent, blameless ones, the nest of, for Jehovah, okay? Uh, corrupts the beast. Corrupts the beast, man. And the might of his day is an angel like Sodom and Gomorrah. That was what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. They were filled with this beast seed, okay? They looked like men and act like men and talk like men, but they weren't. Remember those men wanted to have sex with the angels? Bring those guys out here, angel on angel, defilement on defilement. And Lot said, not so, I've got a daughter, have her. Deuteronomy 2, 10 and 11 the Emims dwelt therein in the times past, a people great. That means they were, they were a huge group of people and they were tall as the Anakims. The Anakims was some of the giant families in Israel that God told Joshua to wipe out and they didn't totally wipe them out. King David came along and totally wiped them all out. All those battles you see, you see King David having was against these giant folks, the Philistines and the Anakims and the list went on, the Amalekites. Okay, they had all mixed their seed with demon seed. Barack Hussein Obama is an Amalekite. The Bible codes tell us over and over and over. He's a beast man, and he really becomes the son of perdition when Satan enters him. And Satan has his hand in all of this, says this note down here. A foreigner for the breeder of the Nephilim. It's not humans. It's a foreigner. Uh, they're going to be called outer spacemen when they are introduced to the world, but we know they're demons in drag. Okay? So, let's look at another one. The very next code is his chiefs will confess from the mouth that DNA is 666. This was September 5th. September 5th, 2017. His chiefs will confess from the mouth that DNA is 666. That's what we've been talking about. Okay? The mark of the beast is a genetic marker transforming people into beasts. Nephilim. And Nephilim can't be saved. Jesus became 100% human being, so only 100% human beings could be saved. That's why Satan is wanting to get everybody to get this mark. And as soon as they get that marker... And you and I will have been raptured. If you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, we will have been raptured. We won't have to see any of this. That takes place at the middle of the tribulation. The three and a half year mark is when that'll be implemented. And people will have a choice. There won't be a bunch of religions and Buddha and the, it's going to be Jesus or Satan. Who are you going to pay your allegiance to? And people say, I pay my allegiance to Satan because they're going to be promised houses and lands and credits in their bank accounts. Okay, because nobody will be able to buy, sell, and trade without this marker. So people are going to be like, line me up, sign me up, baby, come on, let's do this. And as soon as they have this implant placed into their body, the DNA activates itself, starts going through their body, and they become beasts, unsavable, unsalvageable beast that God, Jesus Christ himself, will come and kill. And he'll use Nibiru and the fireballs and the poisons and everything to start killing them off quickly. And when he comes back at the end of the seven years, he's going to kill a whole bunch of them himself with the word of his mouth. Amen. So his chiefs, that's Satan's chiefs, that's Obama's chiefs, that's the, the leaders will confess from the mouth that DNA is 666 and the fallen ones, the, all the fallen angels, the aliens will, you know, what they'll say, the aliens will be telling everybody this. It's a time of 666 is before me, the abomination from the sun. It's spirits, it's the beast, it's an army arrayed for war, the frogs. This is at the end when Jesus comes back to kill them. Remember, out of Barack Obama's mouth, out of Satan's mouth, and out of the false prophet's mouth, which is the Pope, comes these frog-like creatures, and they go into all the world and cast a spell and a hex to draw everybody to war to come to the bat Battle of Armageddon, which is the Ezekiel 38 Gog-Magog War. Vondo says, we saw a taste of that when BHO was prez. People voted for him because they thought he was going to give them money, pay their mortgage, give them free phones. The list goes on, and he'll do that again. 
and people are just going to jump on it. They, they will have been hungry, starving. Oh, my house got, God destroyed my home. I had to move from one country to another. I'm just traveling and Brock's going to give me a free bank account and a bunch of money and a house. And they're going to get that mark, baby. That's why God hated Cain or, or Esau. Esau traded his entire future for a bowl of soup, his birthright, his promise, his inheritance. And God hates that idea. And he is a picture of everybody in the tribulation who trades their souls for a bowl of soup, for a house, for air conditioning, instead of enduring to the end. And they that endure to the end during the tribulation, they're the ones who will be saved. Amen? All right. Jesus endured for us, the believer. Hallelujah. That verse is not for us. Don't you think that endure to the end is for you? Endure to the end is for the tribulation saint. You and I, our faith is in the fact that Jesus endured to the end and throughout the end and rose from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. We'll finish up this code. Ezekiel 14, 3. These men have set up their idols in their hearts and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them, God says? All you people, you love your sports. You love your movies. You love your man cave. You love everything. Should God be inquired of you? Is he going to listen to you when you holler out, Lord, help me, Lord, help me? He said, I will not hear you in that day, the day of his judgment. Revelation 16, 13, and 14. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. The dragon is Satan. Out of the mouth of the beast, that is Obama. And out of the mouth of the false prophet, that's the Pope. For they are spirits of the devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth of the whole world to gather them to battle. Put a hex on them. Y'all come to the battle. Because Obama and the devil, everybody wants to kill them so they could take their property and take their booty. Okay, that, It's all about stealing yours. I want yours. I want what you got. And so they put this hex out there, these, these frog-like creatures, with aliens, right? Aliens look like frog-like creatures, right? And so it's all demonic, the whole setup. Together for the great battle of that great day of God Almighty, it's the Nephilim, the frogs. Barak on the throne, by this time he is the king of the world. He is the secretary general of the United Nations, and the United Nations runs the show. And ten kings have offered themselves to him, their kingdoms, and they've given them over to the beast. And the beast is sitting on that throne. And that's what this says. All right, guys. Praise God. That's some good Bible codes right there. Good Bible codes. I love you. Pray for one another. Pray for Sean. Uh, <laughs> Sean was showing me some numbers. I tell you what, guys. Sister Lindy is used by the Lord. Her life, her name her existence, her day markers, to go along as a second witness as Sean is doing these codes and their numbers match up. And that's very vital. Uh, you might say, what does that mean? What? You'll know later. I'll know later. But it means a whole lot. And so God, man, God's using you like that, guys. God God is using you in, you in ways you don't even know. Will you just yield yourself to him and say, Lord, I want to give up this entire world. I hate this world. I don't want to serve any of these Nephilim. I don't want to serve any of these stuff. Guys, when you're lusting after chicks, they're probably Nephilim. They're probably lizards in human form. They're probably demons in human form. Have any of you seen those photographs going around of Kardashian's hands? They're plastic as they can be. Y'all need to see that. I forget which, which Kardashian. But there she is with her sharp, pointy fingernails and her plastic hands, fake as they can be. She has six fingers and six toes. A couple of the Kardashian girls do, Kim and her sister. I think this is Chloe. It's Chloe's Bruce's daughter. All Nephilim, dude, running the world. Their dad, the lawyer, OJ's lawyer, was the satanic high priest in Hollywood, working the hex, working the spell, okay? Satanic to the gills, man. Don't be deceived. Follow Jesus, follow him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Read that Bible, 10 to 20 chapters a day, and familiarize yourself with these Bible codes. Vondo puts up that Bible code link 
for you to download it. He puts it up every night on every sermon. Do yourself a favor and do that. Uh, hermorphodites too. Yep. Same thing, man. We have both sex genitals. Yep. And, and most of those end up going into porn. It's all a satanic thing, man, to draw people away from God. It's Canaanite. Lucifer is one of these. He has both sex organs. Okay? That's what they worship. That's what this whole sex change thing is. Men becoming women, women becoming men. That's when you reach your highest apex is when you are both in the Canaanite worship. That's why God told Moses, when you come into Canaan, kill them all. Kill them all. Burn their pictures, burn their photos, burn their altars. Kill them all. And they didn't. And they wreaked havoc in their lives forever. Amen? And they're back. They went underground and they're back. And... Why haven't we seen the giants? Why haven't we seen the monsters? Why do we just every now and then get a picture of a Bigfoot, which is a Nephilim, guys? Okay. Vino says Bephomet has both sex organs. That's that goat head of Mendes, and he has breasts and both sex organs. It's all Canaanite worship. Satanism is that, guys. What did God, Jesus reminded him, says, haven't you heard that in the beginning he made them male and female? That's his doctor now, guys. Canaanite is the opposite of that. And they want you to be soft on that. And don't be so harsh and don't be so mean because anything you say against that's hate speech. They've all developed that. So these poor people in the tribulation are going to have a rough time who become believers when they finally believe. And, and it's not going to take much to get many to believe. They will When all this hell around them is going on, They'll believe what grandma taught, what my mama taught, what, what that preacher down there in Jerusalem's teaching. They're going to believe. They're going to believe. They're going to know there's two sides, and they're going to, many of them are going to hate Satan and love Jesus. And the price tag will be their lives. And there will be many. We see that in the book of Revelation. Many tribulation saints who come to heaven. In the uh, first six seals, man, tons of people come to heaven in the first six seals after we've been raptured. Amen. I feel like there was something I wanted to say, but I just, I can't think of it. I'll try to find that picture and get it uploaded. Or Vondo, if you can, um, that handkerchief from the 1939 World Fair showing the two towers and the two planes. it has been their plan the whole time. It's a ritual. They got to put it in front of your eyes and the ritual has to be worked. Just like God's seven feast, God told Moses to practice. So Satan jumps in, and so he has his people practice. And the deceived Christians, many Christians practice Easter. Many Christians practice Christmas. Many Christians practice Valentine's Day. That's all Satan's practice, guys. That If it's not in the Bible, don't practice it. Don't do it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Follow Jesus, guys. Praise God. Pray for the tribulation saints. Amen, Heather. Pray for them now. Pray for them now to be saved. Lord God, help them. Lead them to salvation. Get them the word. Miss Catherine says, thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just preaching the truth of the Bible codes. The Bible code is the word of God. And it's for now. Aren't you thankful? It's for now with specifics. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, please, please help us to Continue to love you and not be sidetracked and deceived. Keep us in your word. Keep us faithful to you. Keep us faithful to your call. Help us to pray for one another, love one another, lift each other up. And I just pray for wisdom and Sean. You'll just direct him. You'll direct him in these, these final days of completing these six thunders and help him with that, Lord. As we all prepare to see you face to face, that's going to be the most awesome, glorious start to an eternity that I could ever think of. Your plan is beyond amazing, beyond researching and figuring out. And we're so thankful for that. We're thankful to be a part of that, a huge part of it, your favorite part, your bride, Jesus. What a privilege. I pray for anybody listening to us who is not saved, who has believed another gospel, who has placed their faith in a false Jesus. I pray that you'll convict Convict them to follow you in the Bible and just receive your free gift of grace. Grace means free gift. Lord, put that in their heart. Please put that in their heart. Free gift. Free gift. Free gift. 
and it's only to be believed. Lord, we believe. We thank you for your death, burial, and resurrection. Thank you for that resurrection yesterday. And the one we're looking forward to here in our year, as it's about to change to 2023 in May, we look to you. You are the one that we adore. You're the one that we praise. You're the one that we need. And please help us to finish well, Lord, together, holding hands and every one of us crossing that line together at the completion, being ready to be raptured, not missing our crowns. Put that in our hearts, Lord, to serve you faithfully 100% every day, every minute, every nanosecond. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Man, guys, I love you all dearly. Uh, just pray for one another. Look after one another. As the Lord puts something on your heart, do it. All right? I love you, man. God bless you.